My name is Zach Gibbs, and I'm a content developer within Education Services inside Juniper Networks. And today we'll be going through the Layer 3 VPN Route Targets Learning Byte. All right, so here is our topology. There's a few things I want to go over. First, we have some routers here that you'll see. You see the providers network, you see two PE devices. We see PE1 and PE2. And then you have the P routers in the middle, P1, 2, 3, and 4. That really won't be mattering too much for what we're doing with this learning byte. Just be aware that they are there. And with each PE router, it's connected to two CE routers. You can see that PE1 is connected to CE1 and CE2. And with CE1, there's the red VPN. And you can see the host it's connected to, the network it has there. And something I do want to point out here is that between CE1 and PE1, it's BGP that is exchanging the, uh, the customer routes. And it's that way between all PE and CE connections. So just keep that in mind. That's how we're exchanging routes. Okay, so with that being said, let's look at CE1 here. We can see that there's the network 10.1.2.0 slash 24. And we can see there's a host there, has the IP address of 10.1.2.1. It connects into CE3, or rather CE3 is also part of the red VPN. It has the 10.1.3.0/24 network with host 3 with the 10.1.3.3 address for host 3. Now notice how the prefixes here in the red VPN are the same as what we have in the blue VPN. We look at PE1 connected to CE2 as part of the blue VPN there with CE2, and we have 10.1.2/24, and host 2 has a different IP address but it could have the same IP address as host one. This is how layer three VPNs are supposed to work. And so, but I didn't do that way because it's gonna, I'll be able to show some interesting things when doing the verification part of it, but we have 10.1.2.2 for host two, and then host four, we have 10.1.3.4 inside the prefix of 10.1.3.0 slash 24. So notice how we have some overlapping prefixes and between the red VPN and the blue VPN. And the whole idea of an L3 VPN is we can specify a route target that uh, will keep these prefixes separate. And so the different customers traffic between the red VPN and blue VPN shouldn't mix. And that's the whole idea there. And you can see with the tables I have up, you can see the AS that uh, the red VPN is using, the AS the blue VPN is using, the CEs, we already talked about that, and the route target. So that's what we're gonna configure for the route targets for the different VPNs. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump to the CLI and get this going. All right, so here is PE1, and I'm under the routing instances hierarchy. And you can see here we have the blue and red VPN uh, configured already, or the VPNs, two separate ones, of course. However, there's no route target configured yet. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's say blue VRF target, say target, colon, six four five. 1, 2, colon 2 for the blue VRF. And then for the red VRF, we're going to have the VRF target, target colon 6, 4, 5, 1, 2, colon 1. And you can see those changes there between the two VPNs. Let's go ahead and commit that configuration. And then we'll jump to PE2 and basically do the same thing. So here's PE2. You can see we have the blue and red VPNs. And so let's configure the route targets. The blue VPN is going to have the, oops, if I use the right keyword there, the target colon six, four, five, one, two, colon two. And red is going to have VRF target colon six, four, five, one, two, colon one. Now, something I want to point out here before we get too far is Notice how we're using the VRF target command here. This is a shortcut we can use to quickly specify the target that we want to use for a specific VPN. The alternative way to do this is to use VRF import and export policies. And we can specify to import and export based on uh, certain route targets. And so 99% of the time using the VRF target shortcut here is gonna suffice for what you need but you might need to do some special filtering, and so that's where VRF import and export communities come into play. So we'll go ahead and commit that configuration. And now that that configuration is committed, let's look at the routes we have first before we do any testing. Let's do a quick BGP summary. And you can see here that we have, the first two outputs we have here are the VRFs, the, so what we're getting, so we're getting one route, and that's what we should be getting for each VRF. We're getting that one route, and that's good. 
and that's coming from the CEs. And then we're passing this, or rather, besides passing, we're receiving from the route reflector routes for the red and blue VRFs. And you see we're receiving two routes there. So perfect, that's what we want to see. Because we should be receiving two routes for each VRF. And the reason behind that is the prefix of the CE side and then also of the actual interface, of the VRF interface is what we're receiving there. So let's look into that a little more detail. Let's do a run show route table. And we'll do, let's see, red dot inet dot zero. And you can see what we have in the red dot inet dot zero. We see we have that the CEs are sending the 10.1.3.0 slash 24 prefix. We can see that here. We can see that this interface, this is our VRF interface for the red VRF. We could do the show red, and we see the interface that we have in there. We have Giggy3. So I'll scroll back up, and you can see here that we're receiving this BGP route from the CE. And then this is the route that we're receiving through the VRF, because the CE1 device has the 10.1.2.0 slash 24 prefix that's passing along. So that's perfect. That's what we want to see there. And the uh, this is the other side, the from the CE1, the 10.2.0.0 slash 30. That's the uh, interface prefix for the VRF interface on PE1 that is in the red VPN. And so that's where that route's coming from. I did mention that earlier. So keep that in mind. And now we can look at the, uh, let's look at the blue VRF route table there. And you can see here, we kind of just have the opposite. We have the 10.1.2.0 slash 24 prefix that is coming, and that's coming from PE1. And that is a part of the blue VPN. And then we have the 10.1.3.0, which is what CE4 is sending to PE2 here. And then we have that slash 30 route that is that VRF interface from PE1 that is in the blue VPN. And so that's perfect. That's what we want to be seeing with that. So let's attempt to communicate. So here is the customer devices. This is just an SRX device I have split up into routing instances and they're, they're acting as the different CE devices. Well, it's ping from CE1 to host three. So we'll ping 10.1.3.3 and we'll specify the routing instance of CE1. And perfect, that's what we wanna see. We wanna see that communication flowing. So that looks good. So what happens if we attempt to ping host four, which is a part of the blue VPN. So let's try that. So that address, if you recall, is just dot four here. And that doesn't work, it's unreachable because that's what we want to happen. We don't want hosts in the red VPN to be able to communicate with hosts in the blue VPN. And we can kind of swap this around. Let's say CE4, let's see if CE4 can talk with uh, CE2. So that'd be 2.2 .2. and perfect, no problem there. And CE, Two can or CE4 cannot talk with hosts in uh, CE1. So we'll say 2.1. And that's exactly what we want to see. Now, what happens if we were to put, say we messed up on the route targets and we put them all using the same route targets, all the VPNs using the same route targets? Well, then we're going to have duplicate routes that we're passing around. And that's going to create some communication issues. So let's give that a try just for funsies. So let's see, we'll change the, we'll change the blue VPN to use VRF target 64512.1, which is the wrong route target, but is the route target of the red VPN. And it helps them actually specify the command correctly. We'll commit that. And then let's jump to PE2. And same thing for the blue VPN here. One, one. So you can see they are both using the same route target. All right, so let's see what happened. I, I can tell you right now it's not anything good. So let's look at the route table. Or let's do the BGP summary again. We see the BGP summary. Notice how things look a little different here. We have three routes being received, or three are active. We see four received. That's a little different than what we had before. So let's look into those route tables. Let's look at red first. And a zero table, and we'll see some interesting things here. Notice how for this route here, this 10.1.2.0 slash 24, how we now have two different routes for it. Before we only had one route for it. And why is that? Because we have two different PEs 
or two different CEs that are advertising that route to the PE routers. Then those PE routers are then advertising them around because all these route targets match. That's definitely a bad thing to have. And so what we can do here is, well, let's jump to the, uh, to the customer device and see what happens when we try to communicate. We'll see some, some bad things happening. So here is the customer device. So let's go ahead and ping. And sometimes it's depending on how the routes are shared. Sometimes things will work, sometimes they won't. So I might have to try a few different things so it can get interesting. But this is what happens when you have duplicate routes being passed around. So let's see. So CE4 is going to ping. This is host one. And it can't ping it. That's fine. So let's try to ping. Let's see. CE4. Let's see if CE4 can ping host two, which it should be able to ping. And it can. That's good. So let's try from CE1 then. Let's see if CE1 can ping. Let's see. Host. Let's see if we can ping host three first. And we can't. We should be able to ping host three. We're in the same VPN. Well, we can't because uh, the traffic's being is not being directed correctly. It's not being routed correctly because of the routes. So that's definitely a huge problem. So let's see if we can ping four from this side. I don't think we can. No, we can ping four. So we couldn't ping four to one, but we can ping one to four. That would be really, really bad if you're mixing customer traffic like this and they can ping one way, can't ping the other way. They, they're pinging the other customer's hosts. That would be really bad. Not to mention that in this scenario, we don't have duplicate uh, IPs here, but you, you would have duplicate IPs if you're having two different customers use, that use the same uh, address space. And so not only would you have routes being passed incorrectly, but you would have duplicate IP addresses. It'd be a huge mess. So of course, you don't want to do that. But that shows you how route targets work and why it is important that you have unique route targets for each VPN. So that does bring us to the end of this learning byte. And in this learning byte, we talked about how to configure and use and verify route target usage in a layer three VPN environment. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.